flash storage prices continue to fall, new market opportunities are being enabled on the buy and sell side, especially with the introduction of AI-enabled products. To speak more about the market, I'm speaking to Alex McMullen, CTO of EMEA for Pure Storage. Um, Alex, thanks a lot for talking to me and coming on Frontline. A pleasure. Uh, how is AI being brought into the storage space and how is flash storage changing because of AI? We see the very clear trends in terms of the consumption and generation of bigger and bigger data footprints. And what data scientists tell us most importantly is they want better, cleaner and faster data. They don't want to be in the business of information technology, they want to be in the business of data science. So it's been the big underpinning for Pure and also we're seeing that trend across the rest of the market too. Very much flash is the underpinning of delivering data to in particular GPUs now, which is the big AI technology. Okay, and then you've recently launched a new product, I think called Air Artificial Intelligence, Artificial Intelligence Infrastructure, sorry, Airy. Um, how does that differ from your comp competitors and what does it offer? Or what's new about it? The thing that's most exciting for us at Pure, this is a joint engineering initiative with NVIDIA. We see them very clearly as innovators in the AI and ML spaces, but also they are we look at them as mind twins because they value the combined capability of hardware innovation and software innovation in the same way that Pure does. So Airy is that joint initiative with NVIDIA to produce not just a reference architecture but a turnkey system for artificial intelligence which you can deploy and have up and running within hours where traditionally that would take months and months of hardware and software deployment. Okay, so that's all about speed. It comes down to speed at the end of the day, especially with the, the advent of edge computing and the way things are going to be self-driving cars and everything else. Uh, how much faster do you think we need to go after this? Because if you brought months and weeks down to a few days, can we do it faster? We can always do it faster, but it's not just about the speed, it's also about the time to results. So yes, okay. flash storage and high performance networking are great, but it's also about how long it takes to get an answer and how long it takes to get a good answer, which are often not the same thing. We see quite clearly again the trend toward higher quality, but we're also seeing the pushback from everything from fake news and all the whole ecosystem of data trying to get a better and more substantive result from that data. So performance is key, of course, but it's also about the quality of that result. Okay, and then speaking on fake news and we've had recently Cambridge Analytics and stuff, what is the role of companies like Pure Storage? It doesn't mean it has to be associated with these two topics, but what's the role of companies like Pure Storage um, to help the markets or the, the companies that play in those markets understand why security is so important and why privacy is important to respect as well, um, to basically avoid things going wrong like they've, they've gone in the past few weeks they've seen? So for us, it's all about data security and Pure delivers many of those technologies natively, but we also like to work upstream with our network and our server partners for exactly that reason. Data integrity, data quality, not just across the fake news ecosystem, but more importantly for those people researching food resources, space travel, whether that's medical pathology, those are the key things we think are much more important. You know, the, the broader social media spectrum, you know, not for today's topic, but it's quite clearly we are the end result if the product is free. So that's kind of where we're going. We see for us the bigger point, the bigger challenge becomes getting value from the data. Okay. And then Airy, one of your main competitors will be IBM and HPE. How does it differ from your competitors? What can you offer that they can't? We think it's simply time to market. We think it's also efficiency and elegance of the design. We have an end-to-end -end solution which is, we described it initially in the press releases as AI in a box. It's much, much more than that. It's a system that's designed to work on premises. It can be taken with you in a data center flight case. You can take that with you to a Kenyan coffee field. You can take it to you know, the plains of India. You can deploy that in exactly the same way anywhere. And that's the big win for us. It doesn't need racks and racks of ecosystem. It simply is there in half a rack of capability. So is this pure play on edge computing? It's certainly the underpinnings of that. We see that direction of travel for all kinds of different industries from transport to healthcare. Everybody's trying to solve that data gravity challenge, and we think Pure in this deployment is exactly that kind of capability, yes. Okay, and how are you going to price the, the, the product? We're, we're going to price it, it and it's, it can be bought today through a number of key partners. In Europe, it's PMY, a number of partners in the US, and we will deploy those as well in Asia Pack as well, because we think it shouldn't be a price premium, it should simply be the going in base currency. We don't think that we should be charging an extra premium. We've done the hard work up front with NVIDIA and now it's a key thing to support not just you know the high-tech industry but also academia, healthcare, mm -hmm. agriculture and also some of the more forward-looking things around space travel too. Okay well do you want to um, open up a little bit more about the space travel bit? It's quite interesting because we've had some thoughts from the industry about data centers going to space 
Um, and at the end of the day, it does make sense to whatever human scale. We would always need computing power to power anything, space stations, power stations, whatever. Um, what's Pew's sort of vision here? What's the vision to 20 and a lot? Well, if you look at the <coughs> history of the space program, the Apollo program took us to the moon with the power of a calculator. If you think about where we are now, we have a number of customers heavily involved in that part of the industry who are doing simulation on fluids, on airflow, and also on rocket motor, the way the actual fuel is ingested and burned through the system. So all those customers who are making the next generation leap, you know, Hawking's theory was that we would leave the Earth within 100 years. I'd like to think that someone would sort of done that way before now, and a pure could help with this technology underpin that time to result, time to value, even a year quicker, then that's a great thing for me. So we're going to see pure in outer space. I hope so. I hope I'm there <laughs> leading that charge for sure. <laughs> and then you've recently announced your financial um, financials as well. So one billion revenues um, in annual revenue in eight years, I think, which is quite quite big. Um, what's you preparing now? You're also trying to get 450 million in the funding to acquire something or someone. Uh, no one really knows what's what's coming from you on top of Airy. So if you think about what we've actually achieved, we believe we're the fastest systems company to reach a billion dollars in revenue in eight years. We think we're ahead of all of the other technology companies in that space, including NetApp, who are the most and most recent successful IPO beyond pure in the storage industry. So for us, billion dollars is a great revenue stream. It's also a statement of capability in a market which is one of the most closely held and most closely contested also. So for us, Pure continues to invest in innovation, continues to invest in hardware and software development, but also we're looking at where the market is going because what we've always done is been there with a solution when the problem arrives, and that's what I think we'll continue to do. How long will it take to get to two billion? That, I think, will simply depend on how soon the world is ready for change. Change is the only thing that's constant these days. Every industry is revitalizing itself, reinventing itself. Everybody's now saying, you know, well, Will AI change the world? Will it mean my job is no longer relevant? I think that's not the case. I think we'll just have different jobs. We've gone through the steam engine. We've gone through machination. We've gone through transport. We've gone through electronics. That's the world has evolved. evolved. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> we've done okay. it all before. OK, Alex, thanks a lot for talking to me. Um, don't forget you can follow Data Economy on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And also visit the website on www.data-economy.com.